five round MMA. A different view to MMA. Gotta watch that Welcome five round We're MMA, y'all. Here to join us on today's show out of New Mexico, Ivan Rios. How's it going, Ivan? I'm doing good, brother. About yourself? Good, good, man. So, um, you got a fight coming up, correct? Uh, March 31st, is that right? Uh, that is correct. March 31st, um, Southwest Brawls here in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For the American Fight League, brother, how's it going? Um, we're coming close up on the fight. How, how are you feeling physically, both physically and mentally? Um, physically, I feel I feel in great shape, amazing shape. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, mentally, um, I'm getting I'm getting to that point where it's a little bit um, I'd say strenuous, but it's good. You know, I, I like the feeling of knowing that I'm working hard. You know, I'm taking a a lot on my plate right now with uh, with work and training outside of work. So, but it's going great, man. I couldn't ask for for a better life right now. Everything's going good according to plan. That's good, man. So, for people who don't know, uh, what weight class do you fight in? Uh, I'll be fighting at 125 pounds. Oh, is that kind of your your home right there? You like 125, or you, have you bounced up and down, or is that 125 like where you want to stick at? Uh, for now, I'd say 125 is is my home. Um, I fought at 135 before. I didn't have to cut too much weight, but uh, I feel strong at 125. It's great, you know. So, I mean, you never know, though. You know what I mean? Whatever presents itself in the future. Yeah, that's kind of not too many guys say kind of they feel good at 125. But that's kind of good. You actually feel strong at, the, at that division, and we all know kind of you know the way in the UFC how that division has been kind of you know um, dominated by the champion. That's kind of a pretty openly competitive division, right? Um, I mean, aside from from Mighty Mouth just you know running through people, um, where, where like which I think I, he's only had like one, uh, I'd say maybe about two, three competitive fights. Uh, normally he just runs through guys, but uh, yeah, one twenty five. I mean, it's it's whoever's hungry, man. And uh, there's a lot, a lot of great talent. Those guys are sharp, razor fast. So, I mean, it's no joke at one twenty five. That's for sure. And then, uh, can can you just let the fans know uh, what background you come from, uh, as far as what got you into MMA, and then where are you training at right now? Uh, I actually train at a, a Gracie Baja Las Cruces, so uh, it's a Gracie Baja Academy, based out of Gracie Baja, New Mexico, which is in uh, in Albuquerque. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I have my uh, my professor there. It's a jiu-jitsu based gym. That's my background. I'm a ground guy. Uh, we do striking there. You know, I go. Uh, down the street pretty much to El Paso, Texas, and work a little bit on my hand with uh, uh, Coach Mando Rosales, who runs the MMA squad at Gracie Baja, El Paso. But um, we do it all down here at uh, Gracie Baja Las Cruces. Um, and, um, well, I'm sorry, what was the other part to that question? Well, just that. just a little bit more of your background. Like, um, what got you into MMA? Did you just enroll in a class? Did you always uh, start as a kid? What, what, what's what's your background, and, and how did you get in? <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Um, you know what? I started, uh, I'm actually 32 right now. Um, I started a few years ago. It's been a while, man. It's been about, to be honest, I probably started in 07, just, you know, basic rolling, just decided to walk into the, the university here at MSU and try out a free uh, jiu-jitsu class. Oh. Um, I did that for a little bit, and I took, like, a very, very long time off. Um I officially started training full force, you know, just back at it, back on the grind 24-7 on, I think it was 2013, a few mm. years ago. And I just, it was time for me to just hit it head on and see if I can make something of myself in, in this sport, you know, just uh, in MMA and jiu-jitsu also. I love jiu-jitsu so much. So um, it was just wanting to just prove to, uh, I have two little girls, I'm a family man. So just trying to prove to them that, you know, you can, tough it out and whatever it is you want to do whatever you have a passion for as long as you uh are willing to put up with the ups and downs you can be successful in anything you know no matter what age you decide to start in that's awesome that's a great story like, a lot of people are kind of scared to take that you know a lot of people maybe they'll be maybe doing the exact same thing for years and years and you know not really in love with what they do but are kind of are afraid to you know take that chance man but you're out there doing it you're out, you took a chance i mean fighting's no joke man it's it's a scary thing um, that's super inspirational, brother. I mean, so what, what, what was it about kind of jujitsu that kind of made you fall in love with like you know fighting? Jujitsu is kind of people when they when they get into it, man, it's, it becomes a passion of theirs, and it's kind of, this passion is leading to you know an MMA career for you. Can you just talk about you know how you know that transitioned into you know MMA? Uh, you know what I think what it is, man. It, it's 
you want to test yourself. You know, that's the whole reason anyone can do some sort of sport, especially combative sports. You want to just test yourself and, and test your skills. For me, I want to test my my uh, ability, so to speak. I want to test my discipline up with the opposition, my opponent. Um, I uh, You get some sort of an itch, I would say. I don't know if most people would agree or not. That's why you get the greats out there like uh, Marcelo Garcia, um, Hodger Gracie, uh, Braulio Estima, guys that you wouldn't think. Uh, have cage fought. They've cage fought in the past. Um, a few of them are still doing it. And the new uh, top dogs in the game nowadays, you know, Gary Tonin, Marcus Buchesha, they're all starting to do MMA as well. Um, Mackenzie Dern. Yeah. And it's. I think you just get some sort of an it because to get to like any grappling sport, wrestling, you're you're uh, you're pushing yourself. It's a grind, but it's almost it's it's kind of hard to explain. It's a bit like a like a flow state as well. So um, I think the fact that you push yourself to your limit without actually really truly damaging yourself, it, you kind of get curious, you know, and you want to try more. And, and plus, you know, you I think people see the exposure of, like, let's say UFC and other uh, successful uh, mixed martial arts organizations, and they see where the jiu-jitsu is utilized in that aspect too. So I don't know. I just kind of feel like... Why not? You know what I mean? You're already, you're already doing a pretty uh, full-contact sport. You know, just start throwing a little bit of ground and pound in the mix. And, yeah. <laughs> and just it. Right. And then we've actually interviewed, like, a lot of uh, amateur fighters. And one thing that um, I was always curious about or interesting to know is, like, their game plan as far as being an amateur fighter. We've seen guys that just fight two fights and then try to make their way into pro. We actually interviewed a guy that lost all his amateur fights, all, like, five of them. He went pro and he got, like, five straight wins and he's undefeated right now so well, what's your game plan as far as being in the amateur level and, and the whole you know messing around with 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 being in that level you know what that's something i think about a lot man it's a good question i, I for me i'm actually one of those guys who, who not too long ago wanted to jump into pro this fight for me i wanted to go pro not because i wanted to rush it or anything like that going pro for me is a is a personal goal of mine something that i plan on doing Hopefully mid this year, if not my next fight. Um, I've been around the sport a long time. I've been training with a lot of people a long time. Again, I just never really decided to actually compete in it or uh, actually try and make something of myself until, uh, like I was saying earlier, a few uh, just a few years ago. Um, I trained at the pro level. I trained. With, I trained with a lot of pro fighters at my gym quite a bit. So I know what that grind is like. I know what it entails, and I know what it takes. So. Um, I'm ready, man. I mean, if the next fight is is a a 135 amateur or you know come what may, I'll do it. But right now, I just want to stay in shape, stay stay fight ready, and like I said, man, I'm ready to sign that pro contract. And I, I think MMA fans are very um, familiar with the New Mexico and you know kind of the Southwest scene as being you know, a, lot, a lot of the top gyms on there, you know coming from there but what about like the fight scene there i mean the american fight league is an, is an emerging uh, company from that region um are there a lot of like you know amateur show and pro shows at the area or do you kind of find yourself kind of going out and the district team is kind of going out to you know the west coast or east coast or you know or a little more the midwest to mm -hmm. get fights i think there there is enough shows here to uh understand the game yeah um but i think like any up and coming um uh professionality so to speak or, or any endeavor you have to branch out mm. you have to travel around you have to get your name up there rub elbows uh with the big dogs and whatever you know i might have to go drive three hours up to albuquerque to go train with those guys up at jackson um or i might go to arizona my opponent's actually coming from tucson so um i think you have to do like that do things like that in order to excel in order to reach new heights and um also just to test the mental you know all my this is gonna be my fourth fight. All my fights have been in my hometown. You know, uh, I have to learn. I have to get out of my comfort zone. I have to know what it feels like to go into that enemy territory. You know, and hopefully I can prevail outside also. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Hey, but the the first one's on thirty first uh, Southwest Brawl Seven, the American Fight League. Hey, Ivan, before we let you go, where can people get a hold of you on social media? Uh, you know what? I am on uh, Instagram. Um, that's the only social media that I really do. I don't have time to do. Facebook. I had a Snapchat and I deleted it, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to get back on the Facebook stuff, man. You know what I mean? It's just uh, if I if I 
if I get on Facebook, I already spent enough time on Instagram. If I get on Facebook and then get back on Snapchat, bro, I will have no life whatsoever. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, my man, I am on uh, on Instagram. People can reach me at Ivan underscore R underscore the underscore the terrible. I'm probably going to shorten that up here pretty soon. Um, <laughs> just hit me up, man. You know, I, I'm always doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu competitions, posting up picks, and uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, also, any uh, shout outs you want to give out to you? Any sponsors, or if people want to sponsor you for your fight, they can reach you uh, via your Instagram, correct? That is correct, yes. Awesome, brother. Anyway, best of luck to you, man, on the 31st. Um, we'll have to have you on again, uh, hopefully, for next time for your professional debut, brother. I look forward to it, my man. Thank you so much. All right, man. Good luck. Have a good one, Ivan. Thank you. All right, bye.